and welcome back to Heiner Your Ride. Right. This time the star is a caravan because we fitted out a caravan with a lithium and 240 volt system again and we've taken what was called an off-grid electric system out of there. Which is a terrible system, but before I get into the details, let's roll the intro. As you can see, it had a deep cycle battery in there that was called a Lion battery. And then some pretty crappy excuses for chargers. And the battery was mounted on the outside of the caravan. So this was the old battery box. What we've done is we re relocated all the wiring to the inside. And uh, it had an Anderson solar connection point here before, which I think is a terrible location because it gets hit with rocks there. So we relocated the solar plug-in point to right behind the rear wheels up here. This is where you can plug in your solar blankets or panels now. They're well protected because if stones flick up, they usually hit everything back here, but they don't hit things back there. Also, it's on the off side of the caravan, means you usually don't walk around here a lot. You usually do on the other side, so if a cable is somewhere here, nobody trips over it usually. Uh, we're just charging at the moment through 240. This is the short power connection. I'll show you the real good stuff. It is all on the inside here. What we've got in here, this was the electric cabinet down here before. It has changed a lot now. So what we've done is we put a BCDC 1225D charger in there. We only went for 25D because the vehicle, this is being told with, hasn't got more alternator capacity left. So we can only take 25 amps from there. But since we still wanted really good charging, we connected the existing roof solar system with a separate Victron 100-30 MPPT. There's only 150 watt up the roof at the moment, but this is gonna be extended later with more solar that we're gonna put in series so we can keep the wiring to the roof the way it is. Go high voltage into the regulator and then from there through the MIDI fuse holders down there to charge into the battery. The cool thing about this setup being the way it is now is that when you get 25 amps from your DC-DC charger from the car, you can still get full charge from the roof solar on top of what the BCDC can do. If we would use the MPPT that is in the BCDC, you would still only get 25 amps. It would just take some stuff from the alternator some from solar, but you couldn't exceed it. That's why we go roof solar has its own regulator because then it can be 25 amps plus whatever comes from the roof solar. 
And then we use the external solar panel uh, connection to go through the BCDC because when you connect the external panel, you're not driving. So you can utilize the inbuilt MPPT in the 1225D to plug in your external panels and then you can run different voltages because when you've got a panel that you connect externally, that's usually about 18 volts, something like that. But if we do roof solar, we want to run at at least 36, if we can, 48 volts somewhere there. So we need a separate regulator for that. Uh, that is why we choose this setup. As you can see, everything has integrated quite neatly. We just took the old controller out, put the new one in. We didn't have to change anything with the wiring. We just added an extra cable here so that the MPPT can actually talk to the Servo GX, which is connected to the Touch 50. So as you can see here, this is where you can see the whole system. And the battery has just gone to 100%. The charger in the MultiPlus that I show you uh, is gone into absorption mode. You can see what the DC system is doing. This is short power, external power coming in. This is your MultiPlus inverter charger. This is the AC loads that are running inside the caravan. This is your battery where you can see the wattage and the amps going in and out of the battery. You can see the voltage. This is your DC system where you can see what's happening on the DC side of things. This is your solar system where you can see if solar would actually be charging at the moment. You can see these little bubbles that are now going from here into the battery. You would see some of the bubbles coming through going into the battery as well. Very handy. And the coolest thing about that is at the moment it's connected to Wi-Fi, but you can also connect it through a 3G, 4G modem. So that continuously reports back and you can monitor it on your mobile phone. You can monitor it on your laptop. I can show you that. As you can see the same screen on my laptop. So if this would be connected with a 3G, 4G modem, we can always access the system. So if a customer has got some dramas with the system, isn't quite sure if everything's working all right, we can actually remote log into a system, check all the values. We could do software updates if we wanted to. We can talk him through fault finding scenarios uh, and he can do the same thing. He can get access to his caravan from everywhere as well. It's, uh, it's all part of the Victron remote console. This console is free when you get Victron products that are capable of connecting to this console. So all you need to do is you take your VRM ID, which is stored in the Servo GX. You can find it in the screen. Type that into uh, this console online and then your product appears and you can monitor it as easy as that. We actually find that this is extremely handy and a lot of people are going for it, especially for the, for the remote accessibility because for a lot of people these systems are quite complicated and it's a bit too much for them if they ever have to fault find what is going on and that way they don't have to. As soon as they can call us it means that the 3G 4G modem has got reception and we can access the system and we can check all the values and can see what's going on with the system even from far far away. Uh, let me show you a bit more in here. So we've put twin MIDI fuses here to integrate all the circuits onto the lithium battery. This is gonna get an extra battery in the future. For starters, we've only started with 150 amp hour lithium battery in here. It's our Amtron, 150 amp hour, 175 amp maximum discharge. And down here, you can see we've got the Victron Multi Plus compact 2 kVA inverter charger that is connected to the caravan 240 volt system. So if you would pull the plug on the outside now, that unit switches in less than 20 milliseconds from being a charger to being an inverter again. And it supplies the whole 240 volt system in the caravan. The way we do that is we run two cables, two 240 volt cables from the inverter behind the fridge, through the cabinets. 
as you can see up there. All nicely covered with a cable channel and we connect it to the RCD. We had to change the RCD for this installation and what we do is we take the shore power that comes from the outside plug, run it into the MultiPlus and then the output through the RCD to the whole caravan. That way we've now got an uninterruptible power supply and as soon as you plug shore power or unplug shore power, it will automatically supply the whole caravan from the inverter. Same thing if you're off grid now and you need anything on 240, you can just turn the inverter on and all your 240 volts still works. Just as if you were in a caravan park and you had your external plug plugged in. That is the cool thing about the Victron inverters. They just integrate so easily into these systems and everything will still have the touch and feel as if the manufacturer had installed it. We can actually do that to almost any caravan out there. We've, we've done heaps of them and it always turns out to be a really nice system and the customers are loving it. It's also really easy to control because you don't have to access any of that to turn your inverter on and off. What you can do is you go to the screen and there's another screen on there and on here you can turn the AC mode to charger only, inverter only or off. If you leave it at off, you will hear click and that's 240 off. This is another really cool feature. I turn 240 back on. If you are dealing with a limited shore power supply, what you can do is, as you can see here, it says AC current limit. So here I can limit how many amps the MultiPlus will draw from the external input. So if you've only got a very weak generator, let's say you only got a 2000 watt generator with you, that can supply about 8 amps. So to be on the safe side, you just tell the unit that you can only input 7 amps from external. So as soon as the generator turns on, it will start drawing from shore power, it will charge the batteries. But now while it's charging the batteries, you decide you're gonna turn on your aircon. What would usually happen is that the generator will stall and 240 volt will turn off. But not with this, because you've told it that you can only input 7 amps as soon as it exceeds that, the MultiPlus inverter slash charger will turn from being a charger back into being an inverter into what is called power assist mode. So it will now help the generator with the peak demand. And as soon as the peak demand disappears because you've turned your aircon off or you've turned the microwave off or whatever else you might have been doing, it goes back into being a charger. And all you have to do for that is just change the input current that you can input. I always recommend put it slightly under whatever your supply can actually give you. So generally we would dial this back up to 14 amps because we've got a 15 amp external plug which is usually fused with 15 amps or it should be everywhere in Australia be fused with 15 amps. So we set it to 14 amps Make sure we stay on the good side, make sure we can't blow the external fuse and now you can just uh, plug it into 240 volt, 15 amp plug and the external power will go through the inverter, switch the inverter over into a battery charger, then push the 240 volt from external through and at the same time it charges your battery. Be a bit like magic. That's about it. There isn't a lot more. We've also put a shunt in there. The shunt communicates with the Serbo GX as well to show you all the information on here. And I think that's, that's all that's left here really. The cleanup has been done, just need to do the handover with the customer. You know guys, usually we'd say this thing's ready to drive anywhere and I've even got a patch ready here, but you know, the problem is where to put it. So this time I'd say we just put it on the bed so we got a bat now, it's ready to drive anywhere. Thank you and see you for the next one.